This month marks two years since I started reclaiming and revitalizing this long abandoned Japanese mountain farm. And in those two years, a whole lot has changed, but a whole lot hasn't either, which is a little frustrating considering the progress tends to be slow, but it's also quite rewarding in many regards. But every time that I find myself getting frustrated that things aren't progressing at a pace that I would like, I stop and tell myself, you know, sometimes things in life shouldn't be rushed. Case in point, take the CAO Pilon and Yeho, for instance. This was a cigar that they took a lot of time, money, and energy into producing, and then when it was time to release, they realized it was not ready yet, so they had to put it back down for more aging, two extra years of aging at that, post-rolling. Being that premium long filler cigars tend to benefit from additional age, uh, to an extent that is, this smoke has turned into one of the hottest sellers for the CEAO brand. And not just because it is aged for an additional two years, but because of its ingredients. The Robusto in my hand is a five and a half inch long 54 ring gauge specimen uh, that's produced down in Honduras. And it contains a Sumatran wrapper that hails from Ecuador. Apparently, though, that is a Cuban seed varietal. So which direction it came from, whether it was uh, Cuban seed then grown in Sumatra or Sumatran seed then grown in Cuba, is a question we'll have to ask CAO. That subtlety aside, the binder is an Abano from Honduras. Filler is a Dominican and Nicaraguan combination of Seco and Lijero leaf where Seiko is a little bit on the medium range and is a little bit more shaded than the top leaves from the Lijero, that Lijero leaf gets all the sunlight for the most part, so it is definitely a little on the stronger side in full flavored. Regarding construction, the cigar is just a fantastic feeling smoke, and not a single one of these has had a soft spot in them, and they are very, very firm in their filling. The binder feels tight, but not too tight. And outside of there being a tiny little flat spot on this end down near the foot, I can't detect any unevenness. But the wrapper itself is this gorgeous, oily, leathery, nut brown color. And while there are some seams that can be seen, they are tight enough where you can't really feel them. The same can be said for any of the veins in the tobacco leaf. The foot, however, on this smoke and the one previous is kind of an unevenly shorn thing. The same can be said for the cap, which is doing its job, but it's a little bit on the rougher end when creasy and kind of unevenly placed, so it's kind of leaning to one side. Look close enough and you may detect a tiny bit of tooth as well, presumably from that extra two years of aging. Prior to this cigar becoming a regular production line product in the summer of 2023, it was a limited release that had come out once before and then came back in small production. When this happened, I saw the news blast and immediately contacted the owner of Claro and said, listen man, this looks fantastic. What do you think? Should we get it in? He took one look at the news report, looked at the ingredients and said, hell yeah, dude, let's get it. So we got some. But there was a problem because the minute I got a hold of one and fired it up and started loving it, the more I smoked it, the more I realized this could use a little more aging. Not that it was green tasting, it had plenty of age on it, it just was still a little bit too sharp, shall we say, and muddied at other times. It was kind of unrefined. So we put it down and now we're cycling back almost a year later. After all this aging, the wrapper on this cigar kind of has this muted Sumatra note to it. It's still that kind of earthy, funky, little bit zesty, spicy, aromatic, but it's a little more subdued. And there's more of the cedar notes to the cigar than anything else. Now, whether or not these cedar notes come from the additional two years of aging that CAO placed upon it, or the additional almost year of aging that I have placed upon this blend in my personal or humidor remains to be seen. What can be detected though in the foot is far more vibrant. 
it's molasses like and a little sweet, zesty, and spicy. More Sumatran notes, but that in Lijero does tend to add some of that sun grown intensity and robustness to the blend. Cold jaws are amazing, y'all. I'm telling you. This is more of that molasses mixed in with a stronger cedar note. And that Sumatran flavor that cannot be mistaken for anything else on the market today is the primary flavor profile that I get, at least from that cold draw. I am getting some air pulled through it, but not as much as I would like. So I have to see if this is a little bit of a tighter smoke. But there's only one way to find out if it is or not. So let's get to it, shall we? While we wait on initial impressions to really formulate, let me give you a little bit more insight into this blend. Because there are some notes that deserve writing down in my cigar journal here. CAO markets this cigar as having notes of earth, caramel, and spice. I get a little more molasses than caramel, but uh, okay, we're just getting started. CAO also claims that this is a medium plus cigar in regard to body and strength, which I can already guarantee that that is some bullshit. This cigar is more on the full side than on the medium side. So let's just say it's a full minus. But that's purely subjective. Y'all might find that it is a medium plus and not a full minus. I mean, we're splitting hairs at this point, right? Some other notes on this cigar is that even though it has gone into full production, they are still limiting it to 5,000 boxes per production run. So it is still a bit of a rarity. And then finally, there is that topic of its ingredients. Because Lijero makes for a pretty stout tobacco strain. Sumatran can be, dependent upon, well, whether it's grown in Indonesia or down in Ecuador like this one. And Abano, can, the same can be said, uh, especially considering that this is Honduran Abano, which can be a little bit on the earthy side. I do and don't like the start to this cigar. The portions of it that are more molasses-like to me and a little bit on that Sumatran spice side that's oh so familiar are nice. But that combo of the filler and binder are super dark and kind of muddy. It's this earthy, wet, kind of dark, damp soil taste. It's kind of grainy as well. It's not the most unpleasant cigar flavor profile I've detected in my life, but neither is it one that I thoroughly enjoy. It doesn't take long for the Pilon Añejo to develop a cigar flavor profile that is just as even and clean as the ash that is burning from the foot forward. Sumatran tobacco flavors are all in effect at this point, so it's got exotic spice notes and spicy peppery retrohales and chewier flavor profiles from the internal portions of the cigar are also of note. Definitely a little more on the darker side, which is again where that molasses or a CAO calls it caramel taste comes from. As the first third starts its move into the second third, I continue to note how the Sumatran spice flavor and that wrapper kind of take a back seat and allow the binder and the fillers to dry for a while. Allowing these Dominican, Nicaraguan, and Honduran tobacco strains to take the wheel for a hot minute makes for a very good transitional phase from the first third to the second third. It likes to keep you on your toes and bring out as many flavors as possible at once and then break them down into segmented pieces and let you taste them individually. Sometimes it's the earthen Honduran Abano binder that you're tasting or the stronger Lijero leaf inside the filler. Next thing you know, out comes all the Sumatran herbal spice and some sweetness. And then it suddenly flips on you and takes all of these and just whoosh, mixes them back together. At this particular moment in the cigar, which is well, close to the halfway mark, 
the cigar flavor profile is opting to hit you with more cedar and spice than anything else. It's still slightly sweet, but the cedar notes have ramped up notably as the cigar has progressed. As these flavor profiles increase, so too does the sweetness. So you've got dry and sweet, you got cedar, you got spice, and it's all kind of pushing your palate in a singular direction while still pop, 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 hitting you with all these other ingredients from the filler and binder side of things. It's a very complex cigar and so far very smooth. This smoothness translates well into the retro hails as well. It's still more of an intense sensation and quite a bit spicier, but it becomes more of a velvety uh, sensation. Whereas at first, when I was retrohaling, I was like, woo-wee, peppery, that's strong. But now, it's just silky, velvety, and it's kind of easing into a bubble bath full of Sumatran sexy. I'll see that little tobacco leaf tab uh, hanging over my thumbnail. That is precisely what I'm talking about when I am ranking a cigar and giving it points for its practicality. All too often, cigar manufacturers just slap on a band and don't give you a starting point. So extra points are always awarded to uh, ease of debanding. Additional points are added because, well, hell yeah, why not put a little bit of a tobacco leaf on top? Whoop, whoop, Oh man, yeah. Right about where that band was just a few moments prior. And the cigar flavor profile shifts more toward the Honduran Abano binder than anything else. This gives it a darker, earthier flavor profile and an aromatic that may cause some non-smokers around you to suddenly go, oh my goodness, that is one stinky cigar. You can go ahead and ignore these people. It is a stinky cigar, but hey, that's their problem, not yours. It's pungent, I get it. It's dark, it's earthy, it's rich, it's robust, it's a little sweet smelling as well. And some may compare that to, well, damp soil like we have around us right after the rain. Loamy earth and aromatics aside, the flavor profile in the cigar tends to move toward a date-like flavor dried dates with some exotic spices from the Sumatran wrapper thrown in make for a nice transition into that final third moment. This intensity within the final third is all leather and rich dark notes. It's very much a bold smoke at this moment. But smoke slow as you get near those parting puffs moments and you are going to get a whole bunch back in return. And by return, I mean a return to the molasses from the first third of the cigar, as well as a malty milkiness to the smoke. Uh, again, think malted milk. This plays very nice with all of the leather notes that are very much a primary cigar flavor profile at this moment in the cigar. The Sumatran spice tastes are still there. They just have kind of become overwhelmed by everything else that's going on inside the cigar. But tread carefully enough and you will find parting puffs to be a very enjoyable experience with this stick. Right now it is burning cool and clean and full, but full of flavor as well and enjoyable flavors at that. This cigar has been an absolute blast to revisit and smoke. I think that it is a wonderful looking cigar. It's oily, the color of the wrapper's great. Construction has been top notch, not just in its burn and its coolness, but also the color and shape of the ash. It's not flaky at all, doesn't need any touch-ups. Feels great in the hand, nice firm macho smoke in that regard. The banding and branding score major points for the cigar as well, as well as a few additional points like that little pull tab with the tobacco leaf on it on the back side of the band for when it's time to remove it. But the real star of the show with this is the flavor profile itself, which this cigar has plenty of. You gotta be in the mood for something spicy. You gotta be in the mood for something full. You gotta be in the mood for something dark and leathery and sweet at times and rich. But hey, 
you wouldn't be watching the cigar review video if you weren't into these sort of things. So this smokes for you. So if you do pick up some of the CAOP Lone on Yeho, I would strongly suggest that you set them down for a minute. Smoke one, enjoy it. If you like it, fire up more of them. Be my guest. But if you find that it is a little bit too sharp or funky for you, Put them in your humidor for eight months to a year like I did, and chances are you will find them to be very, very enjoyable. Oh, speaking of enjoyment, I need to give this a review. Let's see, I'll tally up. This is going to score a nice 4.5 out of 5 stars. <laughs> so that's about it for my take on the CAO Pelon Añejo. And uh, I'm going to get back to digging in the dirt. I'll catch you guys on the next review. Thanks for joining us. Cheers.